We begin with the death of O.J. Simpson, the former football star being remembered for one of L.A.'s most famous pursuits and the murder trial that followed. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Carolyn Johnson. And I'm Michael Brownlee. According to his family, he died after a battle with cancer. Our team coverage begins with NBC Four's Conan Nolan live in studio with us with a look at his life. Conan. That's right. He was in America's living room for decades on television as a football star, in commercials, as an actor, a sports broadcaster. But it was his role as a murder suspect that put O.J. Simpson in the center of a unique moment in modern American history, where the issues of race, celebrity, domestic violence, policing, and the administration of justice all converged in what was known then as the trial of the century. He was a black man from the hard scrabble streets of San Francisco's Potrero Hill who rose to international fame, first as a star running back at USC, then with a Hall of Fame career in the NFL. Charismatic and popular after football, Simpson remained in America's living room as a sportscaster, an actor, even a commercial pitchman. Ad researchers say he was colorless to audiences. Simpson was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1985, the same year he married his second wife, Nicole Brown. The couple had two children, but their marriage was marred by domestic violence, with Nicole Brown calling police on multiple occasions with clear evidence of having been beaten. She divorced Simpson and then two years later was murdered, along with friend Ron Goldman outside her Brentwood townhouse. Suspect may be driving a white or light colored Ford Bronco. Five days after the deadly attack and driven by former teammate Al Collings, Simpson led the LAPD on a low speed chase, threatening to take his own life before eventually surrendering. There was a mountain of evidence linking Simpson to the crime. His dream team defense, though, focused on a racist detective who they claim planted evidence. The legacy of the LAPD was also on trial. Attorney Royal Oaks. The phrase, they framed a guilty man, comes to mind. Yeah, he killed the two people. On the other hand, these cops were racist, and in general, we think the system is racist. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder. Justice was not served. Searching for that justice, the Goldman family won a civil suit. Simpson ordered to pay more than $33 million in a wrongful death action. He returned to court multiple times over the next several years for traffic violations, but it was a Las Vegas robbery in 2008. Simpson said he was taking back stolen property that ultimately led him to prison. Count one, conspiracy to commit a crime. Guilty. Count two. Sentenced to 33 years, he served just over nine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He was paroled in 2017. Over the past several years, he's been in declining health. This morning, family members announcing his death from prostate cancer. O.J. Simpson was 76. A very complicated life, but one that will forever be remembered with the deaths of two other people, Nicole Brown Simpson, his ex-wife, and Ronald Goldman. Hey Conan, you not only covered that famous slow-speed pursuit, you were actually in it. Uh, yeah, we've... We were on our way uh, trying to figure out where he was because O.J. Simpson was a fugitive from justice. He didn't turn himself in. And uh, we were on our way to Orange County. We had heard that he was on his way towards us. And on the police radio, the CHP radio, we realized that if we just get back on the freeway going the other direction, pull over to the side, we'll eventually see him. And that's what happened. So we pulled in front of him uh, and reported live on the air. I was driving on a cell phone. Can't do that anymore. It's against the vehicular code <laughs> with a photographer in the passenger seat. Uh, as we saw literally thousands of people on overpasses, cars stopped on the freeway. Uh, it, it was a moment we had never seen before. You know, people say, oh, it's just like a movie. No movie would have come up with yeah. this. Yeah, it was so bizarre. It was. Uh, and, and again, um, it, it was just one of multiple moments. It's, you know, it's hard to describe really, uh, you know, just what that meant, not just for the, for the region, but for the nation. Uh, this was a, this was a, this was a case that captured the imagination and the attention of the world, frankly. Conan, I want to ask, uh, back to that pursuit here for a second, what was going through your mind when you were in the midst yeah. of it? They were behind you. R right. My worry was a couple of things. First, he, uh, there had been a, uh, essentially a suicide note that Robert Kardashian had read earlier, and we were afraid that he would see our camera and use that time to commit suicide, and we'd be blamed for it. We also were afraid we'd get in the middle of a pursuit, yeah. which we sort of were. Uh, I mean, we were in front of it. You were leading it. Yeah, we were leading it. <laughs> uh, and, um, and we were worried about dying, frankly because cars were colliding. We ultimately pulled and let them pass us because two cars had collided in front of us. And, and so I thought, you know, somebody could lose their life 
during the pursuit because mm -hmm. there were so many people trying to j jockey close to uh, to his uh, to his car. And remember, all we knew was that he was in the back seat with a gun to his head. Mm -hmm. And so um, all of that was uh, was playing into my mind as we were reporting live on 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 NBC Four Los Angeles. Uh, yeah, that was quite a moment. Indeed, a very unique time. Uh, right, right. And fortunately, nobody died yeah. then, uh, but, uh, but it could have been worse. Yeah. All right, Conan. Conan. Sure, appreciate it. We want to share with you now a statement we received from Ron Goldman's family late this afternoon, and it reads, The news of Ron's killer passing away is a mixed bag of complicated emotions and reminds us that the journey through grief is not linear. We will continue to advocate for the rights of all victims and survivors, ensuring our voices are heard both within and beyond the courtroom. The statement goes on to say, keeping our family and most importantly, Ron, in your hearts for the last 30 years, we thank you.